Kevin McCullough. All right, Kevin McCullough, glad to have you with us uh, from Times Square, per usual. Uh, anything you want to find from the broadcast, that KevinShow.com, check that out. Um, Patrice Onwuka is back with us from the Independent Women's Forum, and uh, she holds down a very important post there. She's the director for the Center for Economic Opportunity. And since Kamala Harris talked about it at her campaign rally, well, kind of a rally, I think there were like 200 people there uh, in North Carolina, there were more press than people. Uh, but when she unveiled her first policy speech, which was her economic plan, I've been dying to speak to Patrice because she follows this stuff really carefully. Hello, lady. Welcome back. Thank you. Good to see you. Um, first, first opportunity out of the shoot, you have to set policy and say, this is my vision and this is what I'm going to do. And she's going to go after big grocery. That, <laughs> that was a head scratcher for me. I think it was a head scratcher for all of us because she positioned herself as being moderate but this was farther to the left than um, pretty much Bernie Sanders. I mean, he, he probably agreed with a lot of what she had in there, but even further than Elizabeth Warren. What Kamala Harris is going after is a fictitious ghost in price gouging by grocers and food producers. Um, and she thinks that it, it, it's great for headlines and it's an easy tagline. But in fact, I think it would backfire on a lot of households, particularly those who are in low income communities that frankly suffer with um, access to grocery stores and food to begin with. And everyone else, I think we can look forward to higher prices, shortages, um, and less variety of the things we like to buy. Well, and then she went on to say, I'm going to give everyone $25,000 to buy their first home. I, I saw that that was like a $2 trillion deficit hole just blowing right through the budget for the federal government. The The truth is, Patrice, to approach either one of these solutions in that manner, and, I, and I'm not being, I'm not joking now, I, I think it is a fundamentally unserious proposal. I mean, hmm. just the lack of acknowledgement in terms of the impact that energy has on the price of groceries when you're trying to ban fracking and end fossil fuels, but yet you need fossil fuels for irrigation, production, transportation, and refrigeration of groceries. Like there's a direct corresponding element there. And there was no acknowledgement of that and what could be done about it. Well, let's think about what viewpoint she's coming from. Uh, but it's both academic in that you can, government can manipulate the markets. The government but bureaucrats are smart enough. All you need are the smart people to be able to determine what the, the, the perfect price level is and then uh, nationalize that price level and things are going to be great. But we live in the real world where economics and economic realities um, change, particularly when government intervenes in the market. When that happens, consumers and producers change their behavior. So for example, if the government says you can only charge $2 for a gallon of milk, well, the milk producers have seen their, as you talked about, their transportation cost increase, the cost to produce the, the plastic bottles that the milk goes into, the labor cost that it takes to you know, uh, run the machines that milk the cows, the, the, uh, the fixed costs that are associated with you know, just having that machinery in place. So all of these costs are going up for the people who are producing. And the government says, but you can't charge more to make a profit or even to break even. Well, what are they going to do? They're either going to try, they can't pass that cost on to consumers in the long term, um, or so they're going to cut supply. And maybe they won't be making chocolate milk and regular white milk. And eventually they'll cut supply of the white milk that they're producing and they'll go out of business. That's the economic reality. That's not just um, textbook economics. It's also real world experience yeah. that we've seen in other countries that failed when they tried to implement these policies. But I think you're seeing someone who's worked their entire life in government um, and relied on the very smart people from academia to say, well, if we just do it a little bit better than Venezuela or the Soviet Union, we can get it right. No, they will get it wrong and the impacts will be devastating. Well, and I want to point out that the impact is where you started this conversation on the ones that need the relief the most, the ones that have harder access to uh, basic uh, groceries and so forth. And I know that um, 
in some areas, including our inner cities and in our poorest uh, rural areas, that it is the um, it is it, it becomes much more exponentially expensive um, for those smaller stores to even stay in business. They have to pass that cost on to the communities that they live in. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you're just you're draining. Everything is going in the wrong direction, like all the resources, all the help, all the prosperity is moving away from the people that you're trying to help. Yeah. I mean, first off, uh, inflation hurts low income uh, households on fixed budgets, uh, a lot of minority income households as well, because they're spending disproportionately more. Grocers saying that you're going after price gouging. They're operating on margins that are one to three percent at best. One right on a good year. Exactly, but it's about one right now, one percent right now. Where are they going to find the? How are they going to cut down their prices to be able to make? At some margin, if anything at all. And this is where a lot of the other policies come into play, whether you're talking about increased minimum wages in a lot of cities, that's a, a, a grocer's, a big cost for grocers, and all of the other uh, increased costs that I talked about when it comes to um, Now, all of a sudden, you, tr you truly do have food deserts. And not just that you can't get access to fresh cabbage and groceries in a lot of poor neighborhoods. And I visited some recently. I was just astonished. But now you'll see their entire grocery store disappear with these as well. So where do these people eat? How do they find sustenance when that happens? Well, I think in, in Kamala's world, it's um, by going to the government and, and holding out your hand and asking them for, for more, please. Um, and that is the quickest way to personal destruction in, in, in a free market to be dependent upon government is the worst uh, scenario that you can find yourself in. And Ronald Reagan had it right. The scariest words we should ever hear are, hello, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's not usually the way it's done. Patrice, uh, we're going to talk to you again uh, before the uh, uh, elections here. I, I appreciate what you're doing, staying diligent on top of these issues and helping explain them to my people. Terrific. Thank you for having me. It's, you it's got important. it. And we'll be, there'll be plenty more of this to talk about, I'm sure. Follow Patrice over at IWF.org and all the good work of the Independent Women's Forum. You can find there as well. Kevin McCullough coming right back from New York. Stay here. Stick around for more of That Kevin next. That Kevin Show. Kevin McCullough.